Okay, next up, a man who deserves or requires no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway, Peter uh, Geetz. Peter is the CEO of Dossi International since 2001. He has a master's in humanities and was active in the field of IT since 1984. He is an internationally recognized expert um, as a directory expert and core expertise in X.500, LDAP, PKI, Meta Directory, eHumanities, Grid Computing, and he's a pretty darn good MC. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's better. Hmm? Um, so today I wanted to uh, um, talk about some work we have done quite since quite some time, but uh, which is, well, sort of useful uh, in a couple of projects, and I thought it's, it's a good opportunity to, to uh, uh, let, let you know about it. Um, it's an open, uh, well, well, it's an RBAC um, implementation, and I'm very glad that Sean already did all the, the RBAC introductions, so I can skip quite a few of my slides. Um, and th this work uh, was basically done, where I, I, I once had an idea, why not have RBAC made with an open LDAP as database, but the actual work has been done by Markus, and he's sitting right over there. And uh, Ma Ma Marcus, you, you, you will come down for the questions, please, yeah? yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, th th that's the, uh, our agenda. Um, a bit of a motivation for role-based access control. Then uh, the couple of slides I, I, I might be able to skip uh, to introduce the RBAC standard. Uh, I'll have one or two slides about XA, uh, XACML or XACML. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk about open RBAC, uh, about this uh, uh, implementation. Uh, and then, well, the, the title of the uh, presentation is The Pros and Cons of Using LDAP. So why, why did we do it with LDAP and where are the pros and cons? Uh, that would be the end. And in, well, uh, in, in the middle, I, I'll talk about uh, open RBAC implementation and how we have been using it in, in a couple of projects. So, um, for, for the motivation, I thought I'll let others speak. So, uh, for instance, the Health uh, Level 7 Interna International, which is a global authority on standards uh, uh, for uh, in, in the health sector, in, in international uh, organization, and they say their motivation to uh, use RBAC is to simplify authorization management to reduce administrative costs, to improve security, to enhance partner interoperability, and to enable new network level RBAC services. So, and an an another one, uh, well, they, they, they are not very objective. The, the NISTs, uh, they um, so, sort of are the uh, origin of the standard, but uh, they found a new reason why RBAC is so needed. Uh, and the new reason is the, the uh, compliance, uh, uh, compliance uh, subject space. So, for instance, Zara Ban Oxley Act, uh, which established a set of requirements for financial systems to deter fraud and increase corporate accountability, um, and for information technology systems, regulators may need to know who used the system when they logged in and out what accesses or modifications were made to what files and what authorizations were in effect. And IT vendors responding to these requirements have adopted RBAC as central to compliance solutions because RBAC was designed to solve this type of problem. Quote end. 
uh, uh, I'm a bit sad that Daniel Pluter is not in the room anymore. He, he had to leave because I'm sure he would be very against these sentences uh, 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 because uh, yeah, you, you always have the two sides. You have the organizational side and you have the user side and they sort of, uh, yeah, and, and he's, he, he showed us uh, how to look at the user side and how to get uh, information freedom uh, uh, ready. So this is all, uh, he, he, he wouldn't like that. But uh, and, and anyway, uh, it's, it's, um, it's sort of uh, le legislation. Some companies do have to co be compliant to such things. So there, there is a conflict. So, um, so using roles makes access control easier and cl more clearly arranged. Uh, uh, you, you, you can either give a user a right uh, or, or you, give a, a, uh, you, you give the permission to a role and assign a person to a role. And, uh, uh, and, and, and then it, it can be, uh, uh, well, mapped quite nicely and when a user changes her role in an organization, uh, uh, she automatically uh, uh, gets the new privileges for that role and, uh, and, and uh, uh, the old privileges are taken away from her. So um, if, if you have such a system, uh, there are no uh, special ad hoc solutions anymore. So anyone, they, they very well, and, and Andrew had this uh, w wonderful example about uh, 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 the, the COO being in China and needing a password and, and so quickly, quickly a new account is created and, and nobody, no, 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 it, it's not documented that this uh, special account was created and uh, of course it has all the rights uh, uh, because uh, if you do things quick they have to function quickly and then uh, uh, it's the best to, well, 777, yeah? Uh, um, so they, they, such things don't get documented and will be forgotten. And even if this person who, who has this uh, 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 special privileges by this ad hoc solution, even if this person is going to leave the organization, his privileges are still there and uh, maybe his account is still there. And uh, okay, it's, it's, just, it's just no good. So um, another good thing about role-based access control is that you can, well, sort of map your whole or organizational structure in, in, into roles. And um, so um, it, it's, it's a good way to, to organize oneself. If, if you know about the privileges that people ought to have uh, uh, because of their function in an organization, you, you sort of have the, the uh, you, you, you create an overview of all, all the privileges uh, you, you need, uh, so it's always good. Th 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 that's a good thing about identity management in, in, uh, in total. It, it really forces you to have a good overview of, about your processes and your, your uh, uh, infrastructures and so on. And especially uh, uh, w with the role-based access control you have uh, well, I if you think about roles, it's, it's a good thing to think about roles in your, in your company. So, and there are good standards, uh, RBAC and, and uh, ANSI standard and the OASIS standard, Exactl, which is sort of related with, with RBAC. I'll come to that later. Um, so, if you want to, uh, um, well, have uh, uh, such a system, deploy such a system, you need a clear role model. That's what I said just now. You have to think about uh, the roles in your organization. Uh, and um, sort of, they, they, they you have to, uh, well, map these role information with, uh, th with uh, the, the, the persons, uh, the, the identity information you have. So identity management is, of course, very helpful. And um, of course, applications need to, well, to ask the right uh, so-called policy decision point for, for access uh, control uh, questions. Um, so uh, this role information uh, uh, can be either, uh, well, retrieved by, by an uh, LDAP lookup uh, or it could be um, retrieved via, via federated identity management system. So 
the attributes will come within a XAML assertion and not uh, uh, by, by an LDAP uh, lookup. So it, it also this federated identity management uh, uh, subject space fits very well with this uh, concept of role-based access control. And of course you need an implementation and there are some around, we, we heard about uh, uh, the, the new thing from Sean um, and there, 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 there are uh, some others around and well we, we did one as well and I will talk about that later. So uh, RBAC is an uh, ANSI standard um, intended for software engineers and product development managers who design products incorporating access control features, but also for managers and proc procurement officials who seek to acquire computer security products with features that provide access control capabilities. So, um, and, and it's a very interesting standard because it's a very, Sean said it's 80 pages and it is, it is down to single functions, yeah? So, so the, the standard really defines an API, uh, which is not, uh, we, we don't have it quite often. We have, of course, the, the internet draft on, on the C API for LDAP, but usually standards don't define APIs, and, but, but, but this is one of the seldom cases where it does. Okay, we, we heard all that, core basic hierarchical RBAC se separation of duty. Um, let me, uh, well, uh, we, we have a, a bit for uh, uh, RBAC or, uh, uh, terminology. We have objects, any system resource uh, subject to access control is an object such as a file, a printer, a terminal, a database record, access to an application, whatever. Uh, an operation, and well, the definition here is quite, well, academic. It's an executable image of a program which upon invocation executes some function for the user, yeah? But it's quite, quite co correct, but it means an operation like read, write, execute a program or whatever. And you have permissions, that's an approval to perform an operation on one or more RBAC protected objects. You have a role, a role is a job function within the context of an organization with some associated semantics regarding the authority and responsibility conferred on the user assigned to, to this role. A user is a human being or any other agent in an IT system like a machine, a network, uh, an intelligent autonomous uh, agent and so on. And a session is a combination of a randomly unique ID a role set and a lifetime. So there, there uh, the things come together. Somebody authenticates within a session and uh, takes a role within the session and during the lifetime of the session, he's able to act uh, in, uh, with this role. Okay, we had all that. Um, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's also about management, so, so these single functions that are defined are, are well, is all you, you, you really need. So it's even functions like uh, create a user, uh, um, uh, uh, give, uh, uh, add user to a role and, and so on. We have this picture. Uh, th this is the symbol, the, 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 the simple one, the, the core uh, RBAC. We have uh, users, roles, and sessions, and in the session, uh, a user and a role uh, come together, and via the roles, uh, um, uh, the access control uh, on the objects is, is uh, enforced. So hierarchical RBAC um, uh, is, is an extension. Uh, the well, core RBAC, you, you have to implement if you say we are RBAC, uh, um, we, we, we have uh, implemented RBAC. The other three components are sort of optional. Yeah? And one of these optional um, uh, added features is hierarchical uh, RBAC. It's just role hierarchies. It's the limited role hierarchy that is the simple uh, tree structure. That's what we can do easily with a, a directory uh, information tree. And we have this general role hierarchy, which is uh, 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 well, uh, no ordered tree, but uh, there, there's no limit to parent or child nodes. It's just graphs, and well, we we thought 
it is not so important to have that. Um, uh, uh, so we didn't implement it yet because, well, I, I, I'll talk about that later. Um, so uh, the, the role hi hierarchy is just about the roles. And, uh, well, no, I did want to say something more. Well, no, uh, it might come later. Um, se separation of duty, uh, uh, well, Sean talked talk to you about that. The, the di difference, uh, static separation of duty, uh, let, let's, let me go to here. Static separation of duty is uh, di directly uh, 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 at, uh, it's between roles and, and users. So it's one for all. You say the role X can never be uh, um, uh, 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 well shared together with the role Y. Yeah? So it, it is just static rules. These two roles shouldn't be used together. Or no, not shouldn't, but can't be used together. And the dynamic separation of duty is uh, well uh, similar, but but the assignment or the, the checking of that is not static, not once for all, but uh, uh, within one session. So uh, uh, one person can have those two conflicting roles, but only one at a time. Okay, yeah, our uh, bag is extensible. We have already, uh, uh, well, I talked about three uh, different extensions already, but uh, more extensions could be, uh, so, so these three are sort of standardized, but more extensions could be possible. Uh, da David Chadwick, for instance, uh, um, uh, um, proposed this multi-session separation of duty, which means it's not static, uh, but, um, uh, 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 as many sessions as uh, one person can have more than one session, uh, of course, and um, all these uh, uh, um, simultaneous uh, uh, sessions uh, uh, should, should not have conflicting roles. Yeah? It's quite an easy and, and uh, understandable uh, uh, extension that, that uh, could well be uh, implemented. Sean, I, I think you, you, you haven't implemented that. Where, where is he? Oh, over there. You, you, you haven't implemented that as well? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Hopefully, we will not wait on you. <laughs> we, we, we'll see. We, we, we'll talk anyway. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, XACML. Um, extended Access Control Markup Language is an OASIS standard. And, uh, uh, well, it is uh, quite a complex standard, but everything on access control you would ever imagine, you can do it with XACML. It's sort of a programming language for access control. Um, and uh, uh, they it, it very well fits uh, with, with things like XAML, um, security assertion markup language, but it also very nicely integrates with VLDAP via DSML. And uh, there's also a profile for RBAC. So all these standards sort of very nicely fit together. Access policies can be specified independent from applications. Uh, uh, that, that, that's the basic idea. You have sort of the policy administrator uh, who writes the policy for the whole organization and all systems within the organization are able to, to access such a policy decision point that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, gives uh, 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 answers to single uh, access questions. Yeah, well, XACML is slowly, slowly being I implemented. So more and more uh, 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 vendors are, uh, uh, well, uh, are thinking about XACML. So you have policy sets, a container for policies or other policy sets. You have policies and uh, 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 you, you, you can uh, combine uh, policies and policy sets. Um, uh, the basic structure is a condition, and a condition is composed of a subject, a resource, and an action. And that's what we uh, he, uh, well remember in RBAC, we have objects, we, uh, uh, it would be the resource, uh, uh, action would be uh, the, the permission, and subject would be the role. We have, uh, well, the policy decision point. Uh, that's where uh, the XACML policy is stored, and that's where you can, uh, uh, the, the place where uh, you can ask ab about uh, is X allowed to access Y? 
um, and there's the policy enforcement points. That's the actual application that needs this decision. So the policy enforcement point asks the policy decision point, uh, uh, the access question. Um, yeah, well, a target is sort of, um, uh, um, yeah, an overall condition, may maybe a, a collection of simple conditions, uh, so, so sort of, uh, well, the, the head of, of a complex policy. Uh, so f first you check, is this the right policy and uh, via, via the, the targets? And if it is the right policy, you can go in, into the policy and see uh, the, the single conditions and rules. Yeah, the rule is the access control rule and uh, the decision is often made via attributes. So resources can have attributes and, and users or roles can have attributes and uh, uh, Exacmo makes it possible to, to, uh, to define filters uh, via attributes. Filters that, that uh, um, uh, result in true or false. Okay, and, and an uh, uh, Exacmo is request response protocol uh, and a request has a subject, a resource and an action. Again, these three things um, and yeah, uh, the, 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 this is quite interesting and uh, to be honest, this is the reason why it's on my slides uh, anyway. There's a nice uh, uh, a way to, uh, well, a, a standard way to ask such uh, access um, decision questions uh, via uh, uh, web services and uh, so it's, it's uh, uh, you use the XAML request response protocol and inside the XAML you have this XAML a condition or, 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 or question, these three, uh, um, user, object, and, and permission. And uh, it, it's a neat way, standard way, to ask uh, such questions. So a web service can, uh, can contact a policy decision point to, um, uh, and, and ask, is, is the, uh, I, I want to do this uh, for this user, uh, am I allowed to do it or not? Okay, OpenRBAC is an open source implementation of the standard. It, is, uh, it fully implements uh, uh, the, the core, uh, uh, RBAC core, and it uh, implements most of the three extensions. It's just this general uh, role hierarchy that, we, we, uh, that Marcus actually uh, di didn't implement. Yeah? The, the whole work started as diploma thesis, so Marcus came to me and said, I want to make a thesis in the realm of uh, directories. And, and then I, I, well, we, we agreed to, to do this. Uh, uh, why not implement this interesting standard with uh, uh, LDAP, uh, uh, open LDAP technology? Yeah, yeah, I'm very proud of this shirt. Yeah. Um, it was used and extended by DASI in the frame of several research projects. So first there was this diploma thesis, but then it was so useful stuff that Marcus did uh, that I thought now let's let's use it and we we are involved in quite a number of research projects with big scale infrastructures, uh, um, grid computing stuff, and uh, that that's where we actually did the reality test whether this is good or not. And our experience would say it's quite useful uh, in in such environments. Um, yeah, I said it, imp it implements the complete standard uh, uh, except general role. Um, all f thus, all functions defined in the standard are implemented, or most, uh, most of uh, the functions defined in the standard are implemented and accessible uh, uh, either, uh, so I it was done in PHP, so th these are P PHP methods of PHP classes. And uh, all these methods can also be accessed via web services. Uh, so uh, we needed that in, in this one project. It was SOAP-based, so we uh, first had SOAP-based web services for all these uh, uh, RBAC function functions. Yeah, so th there's some documentation on www.openrbac.de. So openrbac.org is still held by some stepping stone guy we wrote to him, but uh, uh, since years we tried to, to get that, but we, we, we didn't. Um, most current sources are not available there, but, they, but they, you, you, you will find a pointer there to, to the uh, SVN 
uh, a server where uh, the, the actual sources can be found. And that's within the TechScript project. I will talk about that project a little later. Um, OpenRBAC is implemented on several distinct layers. We have the core database backend, uh, uh, and that's the OpenLDAP server. So all, um, all information needed for these policy decisions are s is stored in the OpenLDAP server. All RBAC functions are implemented as uh, PHP classes. Um, whereas the three components, uh, our core role, hierarchy, separations of duty, are encapsulated in different classes. So we put the two separation of duty components into one class. So these PHP classes can be accessed via a web service wrapper, um, and there are extended web services that can also access the single RBAC method. So we, we, uh, that, that's our way of extending RBAC. We just have web services that use RBAC services or uh, RBAC methods directly and, and have some logic on, on top of that. Um, yeah, and, and we implemented this XAML XAML uh, check access protocol. So this is how it looks like. We have the, um, the RBAC core and RBAC uh, extensions as PHP classes. We have the LDAP server with the ro user roles, sessions, resources, and permissions stored there. Um, and all the functions are available as web services. And then we, for uh, different projects, we, we have uh, uh, dedicated web services that make use of the whole thing. And uh, uh, you can access it via SOAP, there, there are REST services, uh, uh, so di di direct uh, RESTful services direct uh, over HTTP. You can direct, a uh, web uh, uh, application could directly uh, access the PHP classes. And for the check access uh, questions, so is X allowed to, to uh, perform permission Y on object Z? Uh, you can uh, just uh, uh, fire an LDAP filter directly to the LDAP server. And I, I think that, that is a very interesting uh, possibility because we all know how fast Open LDAP is and how much more faster it will be getting now with the MDB. So uh, uh, you can imagine this policy decision points could, could answer uh, th uh, tens of thousands of, uh, um, of such uh, 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 decision questions uh, per second. Yeah? So it's a high scalable uh, an environment due to the wonderful work of OpenLDAP. <laughs> okay, so uh, th ab about this role hierarchy, I I'm totally out of time. How, how much time do I have? Okay, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll do that. So um, th th that's how we, we implemented the, uh, uh, well, th th that's how we, uh, 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 how our uh, DIT uh, is, is, is looking. So. Uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, OU equals people, and um, these these different uh, um, subtrees could be on different LDAP servers. So the the implementation knows where to look up roles, where to look up people. Th those could be different different LDAP servers. Oh, okay. Okay, is this better? Good. Um, pardon. Well, my, 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 my voice is loud enough. I, I, I don't need this micro anyway. No, so, and, and, and the roles, uh, that, that, that's, that was our trick. So in the first place, I, we thought it would be quite neat to have this role hierarchy just mapped in the directory information tree. So, but that's, that, that's our problem. Uh, and that, that's why I asked Sean th this question. So if we have this kind of uh, graph, so uh, a, a super admin who should have all the rights. So, so, so the, the idea is uh, uh, on top are, uh, are the, the uh, less rights. So uh, an employee just has acce uh, well, access to email maybe, and the secretary has more, more privileges, and an admin has more pri privileges than the employee. So an a super admin should have all the privileges of all admins of all departments or or so, and ex exactly this is not, not doable with our uh, uh, implementation. 
So, um, what, well, what, what we do, so, so th this one is, is not doable. We can't use the uh, DIT hierarchy. What uh, do we do? We just have uh, a, a, a di direct from employee, the super admin, and then say, this super admin has these rights. And because we do, s well, we, we, we did make maybe one or two mistakes uh, um, because we, we uh, uh, have to put into the um, resource object uh, the, the permissions we, we d well, w w with such, such, such a new role that has to be inserted everywhere in every resource object. It is quite some trouble. Anyway, so uh, I, I wanted to be honest here. Yeah? Okay, uh, th th this is how it looks like. We have some, some schema. Um, uh, uh, the user is a normal INET org person, and as I said, it could be on a different LDAP server anyway. Uh, the role, we have a dedicated schema for that. Um, uh, uh, well, we, we have uh, 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 well, a name, and, and we have uh, in a role inhabitants, uh, Arabic performer. And we have the session with a, a lifetime. Um, and uh, 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 we have a user and roles uh, um, connected via, via the session object. And of course, we have the resource. And that, 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 that's, that's the point. We have the permission within the resource. Uh, uh, so the, and the permission says this resource is accessible uh, uh, by, um, by, by uh, the, the, this role. So, for, for instance, uh, the, the, this resource is a door, and only the, sec the, the uh, role inhabitant of the secretary uh, can, can lock the door. Yeah? And a everyone is able to open it, but only one role is able uh, to, to lock it. Yes, that's what this says. Um, so, uh, how did we use it in the TechScript project? TechScript uh, develops a virtual research environment for the humanities currently for philologists, linguists, musicologists, art historians, so a bunch of very interesting people. It's fun to be a member of this project. Um, th there are two co components. One, uh, a rich client, Eclipse space like uh, Apache Directory Studio. That's the so-called lab, that's the GUI. And, and the middleware, that's called TechScript Rep, and all the uh, authentication stuff is, is in, in this TechScript rep part. Um, we use OpenLDAP, uh, OpenRBAC, and Sh Shibboleth, this XAML stuff uh, uh, on, on for, for authentication and authorization. Okay, and uh, besides this, this is called TG off. Uh, this is this OpenLDAP, RBAC, and XAML stuff. Uh, we have a middleware component for retrieval and a CRUD service and so on, and this CRUD service bridges, or the whole middleware bridges um, Shibboleth AAI with uh, grids, uh, so, so the, the back end is a storage grid which uh, uses uh, PKI certificates, and this middleware sort of bridges this, so somebody logs in via Shibboleth and gets a short-lived credential uh, uh, and um, can, uh, uh, can access grid resources. Well, I think I get a little out of time. I'll just show you the, the figures. Six minutes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, th th this is the overall architecture of, of uh, TechScript. You have this uh, TechScript lab, the, the Eclipse space client, uh, and from there, uh, the user can log in to, to, uh, uh, to an AAI via Shibboleth, XAML, and session ID is created, the session ID, here is our open airbag. Uh, um, the, the session ID uh, will be stored in, in the open airbag. And um, so th th this is the first uh, uh, scenario we did. So this uh, CRUD engine just has one certificate, the so-called uh, uh, robot certificate. And uh, in this scenario, the CRUD uh, uh, asks uh, the PDP, uh, uh, the, the open airbag, uh, is, is the session allowed to, to access resource X? And if it is, uh, um, uh, with this robot certificate, it has all control about the storage grid. Uh, uh, so so th this is scenario one. 
I already told you about scenario two, which is um, here uh, um, the, the, this PG off, so uh, a part, uh, a, a layer on top of Open RBAC uh, will uh, create a certificate request after, well, uh, the, the user logs in via Shibboleth. Uh, this infrastructure creates a certificate request. Uh, um, the, the key, the private key is only, will never be stored, it's only uh, in, in memory and uh, it gets a short-lived credential and this short-lived credential certificate is stored here and whenever uh, the, the user wants to access uh, something here in the grid, uh, the CRUD service will uh, via the SID get the uh, short-lived uh, credential and with a short-lived credential, uh, uh, it will access the resources below here, which is good because the resource owner, th this is a heavily distributed environment, so this is a computing center somewhere, and uh, those computing center people, they would like to know who is doing uh, things on their resources. With this first thing, it was only this one robot certificate, but now it is a user certificate, so uh, the, the administrators here are more happy with this scenario. Uh, um, the whole thing, the, the policy decision point uh, in, in this environment, uh, well, is sort of uh, uh, the, the, the policy which is stored here is sort of mapped into uh, POSIX ACLs uh, on, the file, on the file level. So we have a daemon that, uh, that uh, 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 from the information from the LDAP creates POSIX exacles. So the, the policy here is mapped uh, on the file system here. So that, that is uh, the th second scenario. The third scenario is quite, quite the same, but now we don't need this, um, this mapping uh, 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 of, of the, of the uh, uh, po policy. We just, uh, the, the grid middleware infrastructure just calls uh, directly the policy decision point for each uh, uh, access uh, request. And that's where we use this XACL uh, XAML protocol. And so, yeah, uh, th there's a proof of concept of that, but it was, uh, well, the project ended and we couldn't finish the implementation of, to change the grid middleware to, to, to do this protocol. But uh, in proof of concept, it, it did work like this. Okay, so uh, coming to the discussion, I, I already said, um, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, open airbag is uh, trans. Well, I'll, I'll skip this one anyway. Uh, why, uh, why open LDAP as backend? Parts of the information needed uh, is very often already stored in in LDAP. At least the user information, mostly also the the role information, is stored there already and uh, uh, different information objects are organized in different subtrees, which makes it quite neat. Uh, the user on the authentication server and all other data on a dead, uh, can be on a dedicated second uh, LDAP server. So uh, you have a very fast uh, uh, reply to, to access questions. Um, yes, again, uh, uh, Howard does, uh, wonderful measurements, which are always very <laughs> good arguments, and uh, even uh, Helmut's measurements are quite Im impressing as well, uh, having uh, um, pro uh, production scenarios. So we, we know OpenLDAP is just fast enough for, for these things. Um, a resource filter functionality can be easily implemented by constructing complex filters. Um, and uh, with such a filter, only those uh, uh, resources with correct permissions are returned. So it's a very easy way to ask access questions. So what would we do better in a second implementation? We, we, we're planning such a second implementation, different language, maybe not PHP anymore, and uh, the, the concept, uh, uh, well, where, where are we going to change the concept? Um, we would like to, um, to have separate entries for the permissions, so th we have resources and permissions, and then uh, we could very nicely use the wonderful uh, ACL uh, uh, features of OpenLDAP, the set features, to, um, to even have easier and maybe even faster uh, answers to, to access questions. 
Um, so uh, whenever, uh, and, and then whenever a, a filter uh, gives more than uh, zero results, uh, uh, we know the access is granted. So much of the logic uh, can be uh, e even uh, uh, be m uh, uh, put into, into the uh, LDAP server itself and less logic uh, has to be there uh, on, on top of the LDAP server. I think that what, that's basically what I wanted to say. Um, uh, um, yeah, well, the, the, this ACLs, there would be no need to extract session roles and create a complex filter containing all these roles anymore. Changing data structure to have permissions objects would, be, uh, would allow to add additional constraints for each permission. Uh, there are a few cons. Data structure needs to be changed, but that's, uh, that's life, so it will, will not be backwards compatible. And um, there are as many permissions as resource objects or a very large permission object, but uh, that, that's no problem. We can have millions of objects, so these cons are not. So the only disadvantage uh, we really found was that this role relationship cannot really uh, uh, be, be the, the general role hierarchy cannot generally be, be implemented uh, with that. Uh, so we would have to, uh, well, d do it just like Sean to have all the roles uh, flat and the hierarchies just be a pointers. Um, yes. Uh, well, and, and, and uh, to find the roles of a person, you, you, you need two or three searches in the first place, and after that, you have uh, one search per uh, access question. So it's not, not a big disadvantage there. So, yes, um, check access can be implemented by one LDAP filter. I think that, that that's the basic uh, uh, goodie that, that we have in this implementation and uh, the fast read access of LDAP makes such policy decisions very fast. And uh, by using ACLs in the next version, it will be even more powerful, easier to use, and most probably faster in responses. And that was it. Thank you very much. Okay, we got any questions before we go to break? Are you doing anything with auditing at this time? With auditing? Yeah. Well, uh, you, 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 of course, can uh, have the uh, access lock uh, uh, turned on. We, we, have, the, uh, we have the auditing uh, mechanisms. Um, in this project, in this text grid project, uh, it's all about research, and they don't really need auditing. But in principle, auditing is uh, quite, quite easily possible. It, it, because if, if a role t assignment changes, it will be uh, uh, locked in the access lock, and you can have uh, uh, you, you you can audit that from from there. Any other questions? Okay, I have one for you, Peter. Uh, I thought you would. Can the moderator ask a question? Yes, yes, please. Right. Um, if if the mo moderator does uh, RBAC as well, he 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 ought to have <laughs> a, uh, the possibility to yeah. Uh, I was wondering if um, for your provisioning services that you did, you used REST and web services for those APIs that, that you made available remotely. Did you ch uh, choose a schema for that, for the web services, or did you look at SPML or anything like that? Now uh, it's time for Marcus to step down. Huh? <laughs> why, why, why are you still over there? Come on, come on. I mean, that's the man behind the curtain, right? That's, that's, that's the one who, who did yeah. the job. I, I'm, I, I'm just the, the, the evangelist, yeah? <laughs> well, schema for the, well, we, uh, but, but, but I think the answer is yes, we, we use Whistle, if, if that's the answer. But the yes, yes. Was it a custom schema then? Yes, of course. Okay. Did you guys look at SPML at all? I was wondering if SPML, that. well, we, we, we do look at SPML. We, we do a lot of with, with SPML, but uh, we didn't combine these two yet. So okay. we, we have an SPML engine that uh, uh, provision systems, but well, uh, actually th this, these web servers are not so much for provisioning, but just for managing uh, the, the role system and for having applications uh, get uh, right uh, access answers. 
Okay. So it's the same APE um, as the PHP classes, but on s a SOAP level. Okay. But it's um, it's not flat. It is hierarchical. You're using XML, and it's you, like I said, you got WSDL. And Pardon? I mean, you're using WSDL. You're using schema, and, I, yep. are you, and yes. you guys have published that schema. That's part of what you. Yes. Well, okay. it's 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 pu publicly open. The the WSDL is is also at uh, on the SVN. Um, uh, uh, where, where the source code is to be found. And we, we, we don't only do the, the SOAP stuff, we also have, uh, at least for some of the functions, uh, already REST uh, um, okay. uh, without schema then. Huh? Uh, regarding this XML, uh, is this your development or is this version 2, version 3? Well, we, we, we just... Could everybody hear that question? No. Um, Okay, regarding the XACML, is it your implementation first and which version of XACML are you using? So we, we, we just implemented this uh, 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 check access uh, question. So not, not, not the whole po policy stuff. We, we were thinking about um, uh, having a mapping of XML, uh, uh, X ACML policy to, to our LDAP model. And we thought about it and it is possible but we didn't implement that yet, so we, we could we could just map XACML policy in in, in our LDAP model, but we, we, we don't have have this mapping yet. The only thing we implemented uh, uh, in XACML right now is this uh, 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 check access question via the XAML request response protocol. Yeah, well, I I think it was in V2 already, so there, there's no difference there. Okay, any other questions? All right, very nice Wonderful. job, Peter. Thank you. It's, Thank uh, you.